Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have x to the power 10 equals 25 to the power x and we're going to be solving for x values. We're going to look at a couple different things such as Lambert's W function as well as another function and we're also going to take a look at some graphs and results from Wolfram Alpha. Alright, so let's get started. First of all, I noticed that I can simplify this expression. First of all, let's go ahead and raise both sides to the power of 1 over x. And my goal here is to put the x's on the same side because on the right hand side x cancels out with 1 over x. Obviously x equals 0 is not going to satisfy this equation so we don't have to worry about it. But this becomes x to the power 10 over x equals 25. And what do you think would be the next step? Well, I kind of want to turn this into something like, you know, f of x equals f of a, so that I can directly compare and hopefully conclude that x equals a is a solution. But this is not always satisfied. If f of x equals f of a implies x equals a, then that function is somewhat special, right? But if we have x equals a, that is always going to imply f of x equals f of a, if f is well defined. Now, let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit more. Notice that 25 is 5 squared. But guess what? I want to get rid of the 10 as well. So let's go ahead and raise both sides to the power 1 over 10. And then the 10 cancels out, leaving us with x to the power 1 over x, which is nice, equals 25 to the power of 1 over 10. I wasn't able to get f of a on the right hand side, but I'm pretty close because 25 is 5 squared. And then I raise it to the power 1 tenth, and that becomes what? 5 to the power 2 tenths, which is 5 to the power 1 over 5. Great. This is a really important point because from here, we should be able to conclude that x equals 5 is a solution. Obviously, this is not always the case. For example, if I get an equation like x squared equals 4, even though that implies x equals 2, x equals 2 is not the only solution because f of x equals x squared is not injective or 1 to 1. Therefore, there will be two numbers whose square equals 4. The million dollar question is, can there be more than one number for which this equation is true. We know at least x equals 5 is a solution, but are there any other solutions? And the best way to understand it is to look at the graph of x to the power 1 over x. But here's what I'd like to do. Instead of looking at the graph, which you can find easily on Desmos or Wolfram Alpha, I just want to do the following. Take the x to the power 1 over x and then differentiate it. But Let's go ahead and write this as e to the power ln x to the power 1 over x because that'll make the differentiation easier. And then move this 1 over x to the front. That's a power. Using properties of logarithms, you can do it. And then I just want to write it as a quotient, which is better because, you know, we're going to use the quotient rule. Now, how do you differentiate e to the power a function? It's going to be this e to the power the function times the derivative of the function, which is called the chain rule or you can say derivative of the inside what's the derivative of ln x over x it is the derivative of ln x which is 1 over x times x minus the derivative of x times ln x all of that is divided by x squared okay now when we set f prime equal to 0 obviously this is not going to be 0 for real x even for non-real x it's not going to be 0 as far as I know but this can be 0. The numerator 1 minus ln x can be 0. And from here we get ln x equals 1, which means x equals e. So e is an important point. It's a critical point for our function. Let's go ahead and make a table. It's going to be x. Actually, x is going to be here. So this should be f prime, and this should be an f. And the only critical point is e, and that makes the first derivative 0. Make sense? Now, think about this. This is the first derivative or sort of part of it that makes it 0. And if x is greater than e, we're going to have a negative derivative because this is not negative. This is not negative. 
this can be negative if x is greater than e okay like think about e squared okay and so this is going to be positive and you know what that means our function is going to be increasing and then decreasing which means it is going to have a maximum at e so max at e and that value is max value the max value is what since our function is x to the power of 1 over x it's e to the power 1 over e so it's kind of like the e root of e which is kind of like a weird number so anyways so here's what <clears throat> excuse me here's what the function is going to look like so we're going to have like a function that goes like this and then it'll go like that so the idea is it's going to reach the maximum at e so when you're to the left and to the right if you ho draw a horizontal line that cuts it at something less than e to the power of 1 over e then you're going to have two solutions make sense okay anyways you can look into the details but at least I got one solution because now I'm going to show you an alternative approach that's hopefully going to give us something similar, but it'll also allow you to find hopefully more solutions and I'll share some results. Okay, so here's how we can approach it a little differently with a special function, which is called number stability function. So x to the power 10 equals 25 to the power x. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by x to the power or 25 to the power of negative x that's what i meant so let's go ahead and multiply both sides by that and when we do it's actually going to give us one on the right hand side that's the goal we want to get one so we get x to the 10 times 25 to the negative x equals one and for lambert's w function i do need an input like t e to the t when i apply lambert on it it's going to give me t make sense it's going to spit out the t so in other words it's the inverse function for t e to the t got it so here's the next step we're going to raise both sides to the power of 1 over 10 or take the 10th root of both sides and you have to be careful here this is going to become x here's the critical part couldn't this be negative x as well well here's the thing if you take the 10th root yes it can also be negative x so you can proceed with that and you're going to get a different solution. Let me show you the positive case. Hopefully you can figure out the other one. So now we have this equals one. Again, I'm taking the positive root. You can always switch around. And now this is going to become my almost like t e to the t. Okay. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by negative one tenth. So negative x over 10 times 25 to the power of negative x over 10 equals negative 1 over 10. We're pretty close except we have to have t e to the t. So our base needs to be e. So let's go ahead and write this as 25 to the power negative x over 10 as e to the power ln 25 to the power negative x over 10. But I can write it as negative x over 10 times ln 25. Think about it. Move this back as a power and you'll get that. And of course at this point I haven't really done anything like multiply or divide by anything. So this is good. Now since I have my t as this, I do need ln 25 here. Make sense? So multiply both sides by ln 25, and you're going to get the t. And what is t? t is negative x over 10 to the power. No, not power. Sorry. Negative x over 10 times ln 25. This is my t. Get it? And of course, since I multiply both sides by ln 25, this should be ln 25 over 10. So, when you apply Lambert's W function here and here, you're going to get my, the T as a solution. Negative X over 10 times ln 25 equals this. But let's go ahead and simplify this. This is W of negative ln 5 squared over 10. And that is W of negative 2 ln 5 over 10. And now 2 goes into 10 5 times. This is going to become W negative 1 over 5 ln 5 and then here's the trick put the negative 1 here and you're going to get w of 1 over 5 times ln 5 to the power of negative 1 which is 1 over 5 and there we go and this is going to become 1 over 5 so this is going to be 1 over 5 after applying the Lambert's w function several times and we can solve for x awesome how do we solve for x we can go ahead and actually uh, this is not complete. I'm sorry. 
at this point I should be working out a little bit more because this is not obviously 1 over 5 because I'm supposed to write it as ln 1 over 5 times e to the power ln 1 over 5 so this is actually 1 ln 1 over 5 this is the answer from here so I need to put an ln here and then I can kind of write this as ln 5 squared and this is ln 5 to the power negative 1 this negative 1 will move to the front and cancel out with this and then I'm going to end up with a 2 here so 2x over 10 ln 5 equals ln 5 ln 5 cancels out leaving us with 1 2x equals 10 and yay x equals 5 from here and of course if you proceeded with the negative 10th root and you would get a different answer wouldn't you and let's go ahead and take a look at some results first of all the graph shows two intersection points but don't be misled by that because Wolfram Alpha well still says there are two real solutions but guess what it does not show x equals 5 as a solution but it should be a solution right don't you think anyways this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye